Hey everybody, Chuck from Functional Fly again. And the fly I'm going to tie tonight has been done countless times. Uh, we're going to do the Clouser, uh, which most of you may uh, pro or probably know that Bob Clouser developed this fly uh, a couple of decades back. Probably caught more fish around the world uh, and more species than, uh, than any other pattern out there. Uh, great for salt water, great for uh, fresh water. Um, probably hard to come up with a species that hasn't been caught on a clouser minnow. So why am I tying this? Well I'm going to put a little bit different spin on it. Uh, fishing here in San Diego, especially in San Diego Bay, um, water tends to be a little bit murkier and the fish that we're fishing for tend to be kind of toothy. And if you tie a clouser in its classic configuration with primarily bucktail and, uh, and just some straight thread, uh, the fish will tear it apart, uh, which is great because it's phenomenally effective. But I wanted to come up with a version that, uh, that gave me a little bit more durability. So by changing things up the way I've done, uh, I've been able to get as many as uh, 25 to 30 fish out of a single fly. And so I'd like to go ahead and show you how I tie uh, the Clouser for saltwater, uh, especially in San Diego. So here we go. In the vise, I have a partridge sea prince hook in a size 4. The thread that I'm using is a flat wax nylon 210 denier and uh, in an olive color. And I'm going to tie in about a third of the way back, get a few turns in, turn away the tab. And now, a lot of times, you'll see me spin thread to flatten the thread out. I'm going to do just the opposite right here. I'm going to really spin it and let it spin for a bit because I want that thread to cord up. And the reason is is that I'm going to build a bump right at that third of the way point. So that as I uh, as I have that that bump right there, I can now go ahead and tie in my eye and this is a small just a uh, just a lead barbell eye painted white and I'm going to do two X wraps in either direction and I don't want to do any more than that and I've tied that right up against the front side of the bump and I'm going to check my alignment the reason I don't want to make any more turns at this point is that I want to, uh, I'm going to make one turn just on the bare hook just to keep everything settled. I want to be able to get at the point of contact where that barbell meets the hook shank. Because another problem with toothy critters is, is that the eyes can tend to uh, spin around on the hook if they're not on there secure. So I'm going to take just a quick dab and this is a gel type super glue and now I've got that in so it's touching the uh, touching the barbell and now I'll go ahead and do a few more turns of thread and help lock that in I'm going to check it for position one more time make sure that it's squared up on top once I have those X wraps in, now I'm going to do what I call a saddle wrap. And on this, I'm going to go up and over the hook shank. I'm going to come underneath the eye on the other side and then come back up over the hook shank. Do that again, and I'm going to do it multiple times. And I'm putting really strong thread pressure on this, borderline breaking the thread, because it's these tight turns, not the X wraps, that are going to help hold that eye in, in position. So that in conjunction with the uh, with the super glue will lock that in solidly. Now I'm going to come forward about halfway between the barbell eye and the hook eye. And my next step 
is to tie in what's going to be the underbelly. So I have some unique hair here in a polar bear color. And I've cut the, the length in half on this. And what I'm going to do now is I don't like any bait fish to have a blunt wing to it. So I'm going to take and just twist that material out just a little bit to develop a taper. And as I do that on the one end, I automatically get a taper on the other end as well. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this material over double. And this fly is going to be relatively heavily dressed. Now, if you watch uh, Mr. Clouser tie his own flies, you'll see that they're typically very sparse. And what's important to understand is there are times when you want to have a sparse dressing and times when you want something fuller. And the big thing is, is that that's going to control your sink rate. The more fully you dress the fly, the more resistance you're going to have against the water, so it's going to sink more slowly. You can also adjust that by putting a larger or smaller eye on. To tie this in, what I like to do is I like to take that blunt end, trim everything up nice and neat, and I like to point it down at about a 45 degree angle so that that material is sitting between the uh, barbell eye and the hook eye. And it's just sitting right in there. I'm going to come in with a gathering wrap and just kind of collect everything there. Apply very light pressure and then with my second turn come up and around and you'll see that that rolls up and what I also did was I drew back slightly with my left hand on the material so that now all of that material is bound in behind the hook eye and sits in there solidly. Now I don't have to trim away any excess. When I have that bound down up in the front, now I'm going to bring my thread behind the barbell eye and holding that tail up or that belly up, I'm going to make turns and I'm just binding this down to the hook shank and I'm going to come all the way back to the end of the straight part of the shank. And I'm just checking that to check my line, make sure that the uh, make sure that everything is extending straight off the back. I don't want it to bend and, and go down uh, onto the bend. So right there is as far back as I dare go. Now, if you uh, if you're tying flies where the water is a little bit murkier, I want to put in a little bit more flash to help the uh, help the fish find the fly a little bit. So I have probably 10 to 12 strands of crystal flash that right in back at the end of the abdomen. I'm going to tie that crystal flash in. And then once I have it tied in with a single turn, with just moderate thread pressure, again, I'm going to draw back those tips so that I can avoid having to trim away any excess and lose any stray fibers. Now everything is going to get caught up in my next turns. I'll bring that forward and then I'm going to come under the barbell eyes and take one turn, one complete turn in front. So now I'm going to take the flash and I'm going to use it as though it were multi-strand floss. I'm going to avoid that hook point. And I'm going to wrap that right up the back of the fly. Now when I get to the point behind the eyes, I'm going to come up over the top. I'm going to do a figure eight. all the way around. Then I'm going to come under and on the underside of the hook I'm binding that down 
And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take those strands, use the tips of my scissors to kind of separate those. And then push them back. So that then when uh, then when they get tied all the way in, we'll have that flash sitting in on either side of the hook point. The last piece of material to go in on this is, this is Steve Farrar's SF Blend. And I've done the same thing to this that I did with the, uh, with the belly material. I love this stuff. Uh, for bait fish patterns like this because it has a little bit of flash to it, but it's not excessive. I'm going to measure this off. I want the belly to be approximately three times the length of the hook shank. And I like the wing to be just slightly longer. So I'm going to measure that off to the length that I want it to be. Trim away the excess. And then to tie it in, we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to wedge that in between the barbell eye and the hook eye. One loose collaring wrap. Then the second turn, we'll bring it up over on top of the hook. Then I can draw it back gently with my left thumb and forefinger. And then I'll go ahead and bind everything else down. Now once I have that done, I can go ahead, I can turn the fly back over. Got one little piece sticking up here, so I'll trim that away. And then I'll bind that down, make a nice smooth head. Take my whip finisher, and finish that off. Now at this point there would only be one potential problem with this, and that is with wrapping the crystal flash up through here like floss, if, the, if a toothy fish were to bite into that, all of those uh, fibers could just unravel and, and create a, a tangle that wouldn't look real good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a UV glue and I'm going to run a thin bead right up along the back, up and over the top of the barbell eye. And this is uh, this is a thin formula, not the uh, not the flow, not the thick. So I'm just gonna spin that around a little bit, let everything flow and start to come together, and then I'll go ahead and hit it with the glue, or hit it with the light. And after eight to nine seconds or so, now I've got a fly that's extremely durable. It's got a good amount of flash to it. 
go ahead and double check to make sure that the Crystal Flash and the SF Blend are, uh, are evenly divided around the hook point. Put it back in the vise and this fly is going to ride inverted. So that's the way it's going to look going through the water and I guarantee you that that's going to catch fish. So there you have it, my version of the Clouser Minnow. I hope this has uh, given you a couple of uh, couple of new things to think about when you're tying Clousers. Uh, hope you enjoyed the pattern. If you did, please click on the uh, subscribe button and I'll look, uh, look forward to seeing you in more videos soon. Thanks and have a good one.